We're going to show you how to win Commander games without combos. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. Every single day, there's a new Commander video, including today. Patron Ernesto was kind enough to send us money. And if you want to join him on this list that you're seeing right now, you can go to Patreon, and there's a link in the description. Yes, and there's also a link in the description to Into the AM, which is a website where you can get awesome shirts like the ones that we are wearing. And if you buy those shirts using our link, you'll get money off and you'll support this channel. 10% off if you buy through our link. Also, the, these shirts are swag. That's right. I interrupted BZ. Boxfield.com is a supporter of the channel. They're a sponsor, actually. And there's going to be an ad somewhere in the video. And you're not going to know where it is, so don't even try to guess. Yes. Or you could. The, the game is, guess where it is, in the description below. And lose. And lose, because even if you get it right, you cheated. And happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. All right, let's get into the video. We're talking about how to win Commander games without comboing. Now, I would say by far the most common way to win a Commander game is definitely combos. I mean, combos are just the easiest way to do it. Your opponents have 120 life combined, so attacking is rough. But we're going to show you how to get those attacks and how to do it other ways without just going infinite. Because though they're easy and super simple to combo, they're not always the most fun. And often, a lot of playgroups don't even allow them. Yeah, they kind of remove tension from the game just by existing. I think if you show me four decks and one of them has a four-card infinite combo... And the later the game goes, that deck is just heavily favored because it's more likely that those cards are just going to be eventually combined and then no one can do anything because the game ends. So really, EDH could be almost separated into like the non-combo decks and like the combo decks because it's just the power level is so different. Yeah, it's, it's it, they're much different games. Like you said, a deck that just has a chunky, like hard-to-do combo is super favored in the late game versus other decks with no combos. Yeah, so we're going to give you some ways to win without infinite combos. No instant wins, none of that shenanigans. This is like salt of the earth stuff. First thing I want to mention is certain decks, and this is not every deck, so don't think this is necessarily your deck. Some decks can just win straight up with combat. The decks that come to my mind are huge, giant, stompy decks, like that creatures are all so big that you're getting in and they're going to trample over no matter what, and something like the Ur Dragon, where all of your threats are in the air and you can fly over. The Ur Dragon doesn't need to play any of these type of effects we're going to talk about because their dragons are so big. When you say combat, you mean unassisted combat. Unassisted combat, because we are talking about combat wins. Like I'm talking about without modifying things at all, just play your creatures and attack. Right, which is very rare. we got a bunch of categories to talk about how you can win the game without infinite combos, and the first one is overruns. The, the key here is you're going to add a little bit of power but you're going to go wide enough and make enough creatures that it's more than enough damage to kill one or more players. For people who don't know, Overrun's an old school card. Two, green, green, green. All your creatures get plus three, plus three, and trample. So you're just going to give your creatures a big pump, get in. Now, this is one of the worst versions. You're not actually going to play Overrun here, but you will play awesome ones like, well, the boring one, Crater of Behemoth. If you want to go in, Crater of Behemoth is the best of these effects. Bar none, it's not even close. If you have seven creatures on the board or more, you pretty much always just win the game. Yeah, that's why I'm really not going to talk about it because it's basically an instant win. So we're going to give you some more interesting ones. It's close to do a combo. It feels like it feels so close to a combo, like a one card combo that I and don't, I don't really... want to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Triumph of the Hordes though is going to give your creatures infect, and you're going to need a lot of creatures because it only gives plus one plus one trample. But if you can go wide enough, you need to connect ten damage to each player. Kind of harder than it sounds. This one. I don't see as a nearly an, as much of an instant win. I also find this to be more of an, a knockout a player or two one, like because you can easily probably deal ten damage to at least one or two players with your board and trample, but eh, three players it's going to be really hard. And if you don't kill somebody, you basically did no damage. Yeah, so there's there's no reason to send it at them because unless you have you know proliferate or other things, they're just going to have infect in your deck probably doesn't have more infect in it. Right. More of the budget versions of Crater Hoof that we like playing more because we think they're more interesting is Earthshaker Giant, a creature that gives plus three, plus three trample to your team, and Enraise Forerunners, which gives plus two, plus two Vigilance trample to your team. Those are the ones that we think are that add some more tension to the game. They're still going to go wide. You're still going to smash people for a bunch of damage, but it's not an instant game over every time just because you have four creatures in play. Sometimes it will be a game over, like if you go wide enough, you go big enough, these will end the game, right? Yeah, but we want to work for our win. Yeah, exactly. we, we got to have a bigger board. we got to do more. we got to get there. Uh, Earthshaker Giant is actually literally the name of the category, Overrun, uh, but it's on a creature. Yeah, which I like a lot better. Yes. I mean, putting, putting an effect on a creature ETB, we've talked about it a million times. That is really good. Green loves finding creatures. You can't find overrun in green. Uh, we also have just over-the-top 
sort of like go big with one creature and then go wide with everything else. Overwhelming Stampede and Pathbreaker Ibrex both overrun equal to the highest power among creatures you control for everything. These numbers get silly. If you have a 7-7, seven, seven, all your creatures get plus 7, plus 7. They get to the trample like all these overrun effects tend to do, and you just get in. You're just going for it. Finale of Devastation lets you find maybe Earthshaker, Giant, or Enrace Forerunners, but if you spend a million mana, you also get plus 10, plus 10 to your team. This is close. This is one of the best ones in the entire list because this is a versatile card. You It needs to be cast for 10, 10 X, meaning you get to put 12 mana into it. Most of the time, that's not what this card does. It's a tutor most of the yeah. game. And then late game, it is like, all right, now it's just an overrun. Right. Oh, you need an overrun? Well, you have a bunch of mana. Here you go. Also, for tribal decks, you might be interested in Coat of Arms. It pumps all creatures on the battlefield, not just yours. All of them equal to the number of other creatures that share a type with them. So if there's like 15 goblins in play and you control 14 of them, they're all going to get plus 14, plus 14. Which is ludicrous. Yeah. Uh, actually, factually, just ludicrous. Coat of Arms is one of the best finishers for... Every single tribe in this format. Probably except, should get one. Except dragons. Dragons doesn't need it. They don't, they don't care. <laughs> yeah, they don't care at all. Uh, also, going into white for some overrun effects. These ones don't give trample because white tends not to do that. But Elish Norn, obviously this card is amazing. Your creatures have popped up plus two, plus two. Opponents minus two, minus two, meaning all of their X2s are just dead. We know Elish Norn's an amazing magic card. And I think I thought it fit into overrunning. Also really like true conviction. It doesn't give any stat boosts, but it doubles the damage you can deal. And... You don't really have to worry about dying to a backswing, especially when infinite combos aren't possible because you're probably doubling or tripling your life total when you attack with everything. Yeah, and you, it doesn't technically puff, buff power, but it does because it doubles every one of your creature's power with the ability double Your 2-2s two attack for 4. Yeah, your exactly. 4-4s four attack for 8. Yeah, basically everything has double power. So it, it, even though it doesn't say give anything plus plus, it still does. Yeah, and there's also Kathar's Crusade is the last one on this, uh, on this list. It doesn't pump your creature's... But when you play new creatures, it pumps all of them, and it's permanent. So even if they remove Kather's Crusade, maybe you still got two or three plus one, plus one counters out of the deal. Yeah, exactly. Kather's Crusade is just very, very strong. And there's more overrun effects. We didn't list every single one. We can't. We can't because it would take us forever. These are the ones that we play the most and we think are the best. Another common way to win is what we're calling Death by a Thousand Cuts. This is almost never the primary way you close out games. But it will always be capable of closing out games. It's all of the triggers that are like one or two damage or lose two life that just happen over and over and over depending on what your deck is. For example, Blood Artist. If you're having creatures die, if you're sacrificing creatures, you get to drain people out. And if you have enough creatures and somebody's at like 12 life, they're dead. Yeah, it's Blood Artist, Zulaport, Cutthroat, uh, all these versions. There's a million versions of this card. You've seen them. You love them. You play them. They're very good in aristocratic style decks, and sometimes you can just throw them into uh, decks with, like, you know, a sack out letter too. They're good in there too. Lately, we've been counting the Meat Hook Massacre, which has been so good outside of these combo metas. It's just going to drain your opponents whenever your stuff dies, and then when their stuff dies, you gain a life. So it's just when it when it first comes down, it's such a huge life swing, and then for the rest of the game, they're going to have to respect it. Yeah, the Meat Hook Massacre is a very strong magic card. I've been very impressed. If combos aren't possible in your meta, you're playing in that combat meta, play feels, the Meat Hook Massacre. Good. This card is actually, it's getting worth, It's it feels like it's almost worth the $40. <sighs> Which I hope, don't don't listen to this, Wizards. It's not worth it. Reprint it. It, it needs to be reprinted for sure. So that I can buy it. Uh, Impact Tremors. This is just going to deal one to each opponent when you play a creature or when a creature enters. So you want to put out a bunch of tokens, a bunch of dummies, have them enter for whatever reason. And just like Perforos got of the forge, this could be a win condition. Yeah, Perforos is a little better because, one, it can become a creature. It has other abilities. It's indestructible. It's indestructible. It deals two every single time. So Perforos is the much better version of Impact Chambers, but some decks want both. There's also uh, Witty Roastmaster, which True. is I do like that card too because it's a creature for creature decks. An offshoot of the Blood Artist Aristocrat uh type victories is the Goblin Bombardment victories. All your creatures in play represent one damage, and you can use it as removal or whatever, but if they get, they let your board get high enough and they don't remove Goblin Bombardment, people can die. Yeah, Goblin Bombardment just gets huge. It's uh, also, it's it turns into like a hostage situation. If you have like 10, 15 things on the board and someone goes to wipe it, it's like, all right, I'll kill you. Get right. out of here. I'll keep three or four of my things and you're dead. Yeah. It, it's just like, they now can't take actions against you or they lose, and it's perfectly fine to make them have it. It's like, all right, fine, kill me. But a lot of times, you can squeeze some extra value out of it. Yeah, this slow drain also, uh, another thing is extort. It's an ability. It's on a lot of things. But our example, our main one we go to is Blind Obedience. This is a card that's just a Staxi type piece without being, like, terribly unfun. Uh, it's a Staxi type piece, but 
it has extort and there's a bunch of extort cards that are playable. I even think, honestly, I've gotten to the point where I think extort is such a good ability. I think the stupid like two one with lifelink uh, for two is even a playable magic card in Commander now. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't kill people. Don't think that you're gonna play blind obedience on turn two and be like, well, I'm gonna win the game now. It's like as the game goes on and it's not answered, it will add up to maybe 15, 20 damage over the course of the game. You know, counting each opponent as one. It's and then if someone's down to seven, this is a real way to kill them. Yeah, it is. And the, the thing about blind obedience, like you said, is as you get to the late game, this becomes a real threat that people have to answer. Like when you're at five life, you can't let blind obedience stay on the battlefield. It's just it needs to die. I've seen that before, where somebody has to you know waste one of their spells to bounce it, and then wait until I cast it again and counter it because they're going to lose. Yeah. Uh, also, gutter snipe. This is the spell version of this, right? Yeah. Whenever you cast instant sorcery, now you deal two damage, just like perforce for creatures entering. Well, now let's just make it for instants and sorceries. Yeah, instants and sorceries. There's so many ways to loop them and just turn gutter snipe into like, oh, six mana, 12 damage each opponent, please. Yeah, um, there's also Reckless Fireweaver slash, there's a new one. What is its name? It's like Ingenious Artillerist. Artillerist. And that they both say when artifacts enter, deal damage. Exactly like we were talking about before. Now we just moved it down to, it's not creatures, it's artifacts. Yeah, and then you got all your Dina Soul Steepers. You maybe sanguine bond or whatever. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life, or each opponent loses that much life. Great, that's going to add up over the course of the game if you're in life gain. Up next is a cool category called mass evasion, meaning we're going to give all of our creatures flying. We're going to give them protection. We're going to give them some way to just get through, and our opponents cannot block us. Like the situation we're presenting is going to be a no block way for our opponents. First one, Acromus Wells, the biggest, the best of these, I think. Especially if you have your commander out, you just get infinite keywords. They get. So much, so many things. They gain life link. They gain double strike and protection from all colors. Meaning, unless your opponents have artifacts, which they probably don't, you can just beat in on them. If you have thirty power in play, great. You get to deal sixty damage as long as nobody has an artifact creature to block. That's going to be taking out one or maybe two people. Yeah, it it, it eliminates a it eliminates at least one player I, every time a Chromos Will is cast. It almost always eliminates a player. And then you like gain sixty life, and it's like. Come at me. Yeah, now the other players have to kill you, and your board's probably still very dominant because you were able to knock somebody out with it. Yeah, I also like Wonder. You're going to put it in the graveyard, so you want to be discarding it or milling it. Mm -hmm. But then it gives all your creatures flying, which if you build up enough of a board, that's way tougher to block than just, all right, here comes my 5-5. Five -five. Yeah, this is like what we were talking about before, where dragons can just kind of win by themselves. It's because they all fly. Mm -hmm. It's because they're all big, giant flyers. Well, you can make your whole board all big, giant flyers with Wonder. Or just flyers, depending on if they're giant already. That's Fair. That's also fair. Herald of the Streams, this makes your uh, creatures with counters unblockable. So if you're a counters deck, you can do the same type of strategy. You get counters on all your creatures, play this, everything's unblockable. Not just any stream, secret streams. Oh, I'm sorry. He, I thought he was just the Herald of Normal Streams. No, he can't do those. He needs to be the Herald of Secret Streams. So he has no obviously, viewers? Yes, obviously. He has no viewers on Twitch. And only play him in counters decks, for sure. Yeah, uh, Champion of Lampole. This can be go wide or counters decks, uh, but it's going to be... Its power means, so if it gets up to 10 power, anything with less than 10 power can't block on your opponent's side. Any of your things. Yeah, any of your creatures, not just this. So that's going to add up super quickly to just a win because your stuff's going to be unblockable. I don't really have to pump my team if you just can't block anything. Yeah, exactly. And there's one other thing that I really like. The one-sided board wipe, uh, the thing that comes to my mind immediately for this is there's like the ones that like destroy all creatures without counters on them. Uh, there's that one. That makes it one-sided. Volcanic and, Torrent or Immolating Gyre can be one-sided. Well, they are one-sided. Uh, there's also uh, the Ruinous Ultimatum, which yeah. which will also which is just a one-sided board wipe. All these will lead to that. You can also combine a board wipe with a protection spell such as like Selfless Spirit, like the Fairy's Protection, even. Yeah, exactly. So if you cast your normal board wipe, like Vanquish the Horde, and then you add in a um, selfless spirit. Selfless spirit. Boom. Now you can just get in your attacks right away. Yeah, pretty great way to make my creatures unblockable. There's no blockers on the field. Yeah, exactly. And that's a great way to win the game. Like you will, and you're going to be able to kill one or two players at least when you do that normally. The next category is big damage. You can just pump tons of mana into these big number spells and just try to take people out, but not in a way that's like, oh, demonic consultation with Thassa's Oracle. I took you guys out. It's like. I worked to build up this mana, and now I'm going to utilize it on, like, turn 10. Yeah, I think the most common one that you're going to see from this is it's Grey Merchant of Aspel, and it's the most boring here, I would say. But it's probably the – it might be the strongest here. It just – you drain each player equal to your devotion to black. So gain you, that much. And you gain that much. This card is incredible. We know Gary's incredible, but I think it is the most boring of these options. Another go-to is Torment of Hellfire. If you've got 14 mana, you built up, you, you bought your time, you don't have a lot of creatures in your deck – 
here you go. Opponents are taking like dozens of damage and they're losing everything they have. Yeah, exactly. If you're if you can X enough, sometimes they don't have a choice. It doesn't matter if they sacrifice everything, they'll die. Right. They they go through the math and you see really quick. They're like, all right, I can discard my hand. That's four. Sacrifice my three things. That's seven. What was X? Uh. 18. Oh, no. Oh, no. That That's still 30 damage to me. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, Comet Storm, this is the red thing where you just you do the axe for a huge amount and you kick her to hit as many players as you can. Right, and then you're hopefully trying to just deal 40 to everybody. It's possible. Some people like to play Comet Storm for half of that and then copy it. It's way less work. It is a lot less work, and there's a lot of ways to copy it. A lot of a lot of the good commanders uh, that copy just play this because it's their win con. Yeah, uh, uh, Terror of the Peaks is a nice little War Storm Surge. We'll throw that card in there, too. You want to just have gigantic creatures entering repeatedly, and then you can just directly skip combat, forget it, throw damage at people's faces. Yeah, it's funny, because Death by a Thousand... This card, uh, Terror of the Peaks and War Storm Surge are the like big versions of impact chambers but we're not doing it this isn't a thousand cuts it's death by like seven cuts it's death by a bunch of like a, like a sword chopping you it's not a little cuts it's like seven cuts cuz if you take how many times can you take five or six before you just die yeah exactly terror of the peaks is such an awesome card it really is great like it's one of those cards that when it first came I'm like oh it's so expensive but it's so good it's really good <laughs> aether flux reservoir not with combos, obviously, that's the whole thing. Yeah. We're just playing in a life game deck, and we're trying to get up to 151 life so that we can nuclear explosion in everybody else's face. Yeah, it can be a life game deck. It can also be a storm deck that doesn't go infinite. Like, True. If you just cast, like, if you cast 10 spells in the turn, which I've seen before with non-infinite, that's still going to gain you enough life to just pew, cannon. Like, what is it called? It's People always call this something. Why can't oh, it be I don't know. Why? I, can't, I can't think of what it is either. And without any cut at all, I thought of it right now. It's the Death Star. It's a Death Star. You shoot a Death Star at them. You, you blow up their Alderaans. You, yes, you blow up all their Alderaans, which is their whole life. Their whole life. They're on Alderaan when you blow it up. Lastly, Fiery Emancipation. It triples all the damage from sources you control. So if you were going to deal a, a modest amount of damage, your Gutter Snipe's not dealing two. It's dealing six. Yeah, and everything just it goes completely bonkers from there. It gets out of hand so fast. Your I mean, creatures, I, all your 1-1s one basically have plus 3, plus 0, or plus 2, plus 0. Yeah, I mean, this thing adds up quick. It, it kills fast. The damage being dealt, if you deal 7 damage, you deal 21 damage. So if your commander hits, they're dead. Exactly. If Fire Emancipation, very silly magic card. Super funny. This next category is one I utilize a lot. It's mass reanimation. You go through, you're playing your, your graveyard-based creature deck, and you're grinding, and you get into the late game, and they you just can't quite close... Well, that's what we have things like Living Death for. You trade all the creatures and play in graveyards. Everybody does this. But the problem is for them, you're going to get 30 creatures that enter the battlefield. They're all going to do something, and maybe you have Blood Artists in there. Yeah, uh, Living Death is really, really silly, really, really strong. You just you play it in all your self-mill decks, and you you always have stack out. So you get rid of your board, and then you do it. This also doubles as, uh, like, Early in the game, a board wipe it's sometimes. kind of a weirdo board wipe. It is, and I've just seen it be cast as sort of a board wipe. This card is good. I mean, Living Death is a win con, no doubt. Oh, yeah. All the creatures that have these damage-based things that draw you cards, that stop your opponent's creatures, they're all here. It's like an, It's kind of like going wide, but I played. I just happened to be playing a graveyard deck, and you got me to turn 12, so here you go. Yeah, there's also something similar but different, Rise of the Dark Realms. It's nine mana, but it takes every creature from every graveyard, and they don't go back to their, you know, owners. Nope, they all come to you. This ends games. It really does. Sort of a low effort card, but you can't ramp it out on turn five. Yeah, exactly. It, it, this is there's no point in ramping into this card. You this is the late game card. If it's um, as you grind into the late game, the graveyards will fill up, and this card will just get better and better, and it'll win you games. Part of the reason we like packing graveyard hate for stupid nonsense like this thing. Yeah, you need graveyard hate is super important. I, I've I spoke about that in another video. Just play more graveyard hate, people. Yeah, we got we got to get some more. Maybe we'll do a whole short on it. Patriarch's bidding is the tribal version. So if you're all angels and you're trying to self-mill, well, you can choose Patriarch's bidding. It's a really weird wording on the card. And everyone's going to get something back, probably their best thing. But you're going to get 30 things back and wreck their life. Yeah, Patriarch's bidding is a very strange card, like you said. But it's super, super strong. I also like that you can choose angel and they can choose cat. Uh, and then for some reason you'd be like, I actually want cats. No, I like cats. Yeah, uh, you're yeah. right. Oh, no, but I don't get anything back. That was such a bad <laughs> yeah, choice. Exactly. One thing that also breaks these in half uh, is haste. Outlets, haste enablers. If one of your creatures says your creatures have haste, or you got like fires of Yavi Maya in play, well, it doesn't really matter what your creatures do because they're all in play right now and they're all attacking everybody. Yeah, uh, like my one deck has uh, Living Death and Rise of the Dark Realms, and that's Anger. 
Now, usually I bring anger out of my graveyard, but I have sack outlets in the deck. So it comes out of my graveyard. I put it back in my graveyard. Now everything's just got haste. And then that becomes the fastest clock in the world. One turn clock. Yeah. And one of the most common ones to play out of these is Agadim's Awakening. You can't quite get as much out of it, but it's a land on the other side. So this when this card's dead, it's a land. This card's amazing. So good. If you're playing a uh, two-color black deck, this should be in your deck. It, uh, it bleeds to me sure. into the three-color black deck. So, so this is like yes. the, maybe the best MDFC. Yes. Uh, but... Uh, it, I agree with you that it does bleed into the three color black decks, especially if you have a lot of creatures. Something, uh, one last card I want to add here is actually a white card. It's Ascend to Avernus, oh, yeah. which is like kind of like Agony's Awakening, but you just get X or less, but all of them back to the battlefield. It's going to do the same kind of thing. It's a really strong card as well. Yeah, instead of getting one, six, one, five, one, four, it's all six or less creatures just come back. And then white, black, Maybe there's a haste enabler somewhere, but maybe you're probably just going to be blood artisting people. Yeah, you're going to make a huge, gigantic board, and it's going to be a threat. This is a small category, but I wanted to mention Planeswalker Ultimates. A lot of people can rely on those for victories, and I think there's only really a few worth doing, and we'll talk about them. Liliana Dreadhorde General, her ultimate is every opponent sacrifices all of their permanents except for one of each type. So they keep, like, one land, one creature, one artifact. I think you can beat that. The game's really over. You do have to work for them, but I think these are some of the ones that are most possible. Liliana can notably works very well with Yawgmoth, who can like as of like a two card thing. Oh, I'll discard my hand. Oop, got that extra two loyalty. Ultimate. Yeah, I've seen this card just get naturally to its uh, ult as well because it's so good at protecting itself. And if you put yourself in a good board position, this will get there. It's slow. Don't. It's not like I'm saying Lily's a win con in every single deck you played in. No, but when you can protect it, when you have the board wipes, this card it, it's really good. I mean, Lily is super, super silly. Yeah, uh, Tamio Field Researcher kind of is the stand-in here for the doubling season. Planeswalker combo, like, ultimate, I can play Doubling Season, and then I can play Tamio, or I can play Tamio, and then I can play Deep Blow Skate. And her ultimate, in this case, is draw three cards, and you get an emblem with Omniscience. Your spells are free. Yeah, this is combo-esque, but it's not... I don't know if I count it as a combo, right? Right, it's like two cards that gives me Omniscience. That's not combo. I, like, I don't win instantly. You guys are in trouble, but I don't win. Yeah, exactly. So, like, the Doubling Season, yeah, the Tamios, those are good. And the other one that you can actually ult naturally is Teferi Master of Time, and his ultimate is... Time stretch, which means you take two extra turns. He can plus on everybody's turn, so it's just, it's you only get a turn and a half window to stop this dude. Yeah, Teferi's very, very strong. And extra turns are very, very strong. Uh, it's not the most fun, and I think that a lot of people avoid these. I definitely avoid extra turn spells uh, much more now than I used to, because I realize they're not so fun for people to play against. But they're also a good way to win. They're win cons. Uh, Expropriate's the very best one. Next to Face, the other one we play, like, a ton. Then there's... Uh, what well, the... we, we have played it, but not anymore. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, that's true. Time Warp, Temporal Manipulation, and uh, Capture of... Jingzhao. Jingzhao uh, are all... Those are all the amazing ones. I mean, we don't need to talk about it. Extra turns are good, period. They're miserable to play against, and they are some of the most efficient mana-wise cards you can get. You can play them if you if your group's cool with them or you don't care. We just wanted to mention it because it is a non-combo way to win. They're, they're, they're good. They're amazing. Next category we have is just called explosive cards. It's kind of cards that by themselves are huge threats, but they don't come anywhere near to winning the game immediately. Scoot Swarm is one of my favorite examples. You play it, then you play your next land, and maybe it's a fetch land. And you're like, oh, now I have four Scoot Swarms. And as it goes and as you ramp, you're just going to get up to like a thousand Scoot Swarms when all you did was play Scoot Swarm plus a lot of effort. Yeah, also, if you're in a landfall deck, usually Scoot Swarms are very, is a landfall deck, or, you know, sometimes it's a uh, token deck card. But in landfall, if you have two extra land drops, you can get to 64 right away. Yeah. It's like, what is that? That is nonsensical. It's so many Scoot Swarms, especially with fetch lands. Right of Replication, it, it doesn't really win the game on the spot, but it will definitely win the game if you untap with the five tokens you co create that are copies of something. Best one I ever saw was Joe or me, I can't even remember, Right of Replication and Inferno Titan with Haste. It was you. And there's five hasty Inferno Titans. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, the, the Inferno Titans were super silly. There's a lot. Uh, the funniest one that I see a lot that just ends the game is Gary. Without anything else that ends the game, if somebody's got a Gary on their side, you go, right of Replication kicked. The game's over. Yeah, it's five. 50. Dr five drains of 10. <laughs> yep, so everyone's drained for 50 and you gain. Oh, God. I didn't even think. It's, it's pretty silly uh, <laughs> because... It doesn't matter if it's yours or not. But no. You can have zero devotion, and all of a sudden you have ten devotion <laughs> when you make five at once. Such a silly way to win the game. Uh, Avenger of Zendikar, this is a one. 
Army in a can by itself, one card comes down and it pumps those tokens. You don't even have to add anything to it. Yeah, some of those overrun effects we talked about earlier on this list, they're great. They're really, really great with Avengers in a car. You don't need it if you just go fetch land. Now all the now you have seven two threes. Uh, two threes, and that's going wide. Right next turn, you can have seven four fives and a five five. Someone's getting beat up. If this isn't fast, I think this is like the slowest one on here, but it'll beat people up. It'll it certainly requires an answer. Yes, it, it does because it's gonna be very it's it's gonna it adds up. Every single turn, they're one power bigger. Or two, depending on if they played a fetch line or not. Up next is Clouth and Old Gnawbone. Both just say Clouth is when you attack, you get mana, but Old Gnawbone, when you connect, you get treasures. They just make you a ton of mana, so you can just advance your board state, play all your draw spells, draw more stuff, play big stuff. These get you silly, silly, silly amounts of mana. Clouth has, I mean, like, I played it in just like this janky for fun deck. It has won me so many games by itself just because it's like, oh, I have somewhat of a board state. Uh, Clout attack, make 21 mana. Okay, then I'll use it all. And now if you don't answer my board, you lose. Yeah, exactly. Clout is so strong because it has haste, which is one of the things that makes it so strong. Old Knobbone, I mean, it's also really, the really good. The effect has haste. It's whenever a creature hits. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't care if it's that creature. They, these are both just very strong magic cards. Oh, yeah. Genesis Wave is another one you'll find in high permanent decks. You can you can build up your mana, cast it for like X is 12, and then try to put, you know, basically 9 or 10 random permanents in play. Probably good enough to close if they have haste for sure. And if not, see you next turn. And the decks that often play these Genesis Waves in their deck, they cast it for sometimes 20, 30, where mm -hmm. the amount of things we put up are ridiculous. Very similar to that is Primal Surge. If you put no permanents in your deck, it will it'll always result in the win. But I know some people put like to put uh it's tough. If you put no permanents in your deck, I would say it, it probably does nothing. Okay, yes, what I meant to say was the opposite of that, actually. If you put all permanents in your deck, then it'll just win. You'll flip everything. Obviously, you'll have a haste enabler in two, you'll just win. But what some people like to do is like sprinkle in two, three instant sorcery. So it's like playing a little game where it's like I can hit potentially like fifty, but maybe I'll only hit two. I like putting one or two other spells in, not only because it increases the tension with it, because if there's no tension the game's over, right? Like, I oh, I don't have, like, when I don't have to resolve Primal Surge at all, might as well just take it out. Because then what's the difference between that and expropriate? But when it, when there is tension, it's like, well, am I going to hit, you know, one of my five other spells in there? Maybe. I like adding one or two instant sorceries just to add the tension. Because otherwise, what's the difference between Primal Surge and some infinite win? If you're winning on the spot with one spell, no matter when you cast it, eh, I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, no build around, no tension, no... You don't well, there is build around, but it doesn't oh, yeah, factor in, really. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to get to any point in the game. You just you cast it and you win. Yeah, turn two Primal Surge is the same as a turn 25 Primal Surge. Yeah, another thing similar to this, uh, Thousand Year Storm. Love this card. Yeah, this is just a silly card. Whenever you cast your uh, instants and sorceries, you copy it for each other instant and sorceries you've cast this They'll turn. have Storm. It's, it's so silly. I mean, Thousand Year Storm is a completely silly, over-the-top magic card for your spell-slinging decks. To me, this, this one is the epitome of, like... If they pull this off, they deserve it. Like, this card is so it's a six janky. Mana, yeah. It's a six-mana do nothing, and then you have to go off. A, a lot of time you have to untap with it. I'm here for Thousand Year Storm. But we are playing Commander, and we have not even touched on what happens if you try to win with your Commander. Yeah, it's called Commander Damage, and you only have to deal 21 to any individual player with it through combat. Now, what we can do here is we can just get our Commander as a big boy, get in, and we'll give it some evasion or extra pumps like... Embercleave. Embercleave gives plus one, plus one, and double strike. This gets there quick. Oh, did I didn't mention? I actually didn't. Trample as well with that. Trample also, yeah. If your commander's 10 power, surprise, you're dead. You take 22 commander damage. You, most of the time, this is like turns your commander into a two hit kill. One is free because it's a surprise and they're going to trample over some chump blocker. Great. And if it's pumped up with anything else, it is going to be a one hit kill. Yeah. Embercleave is a very silly and strong magic Super character. sweet. It does way more. It always just adds up to more than you think it does. It's like, yeah, I guess I'll just double my damage plus one, which is actually more than double. Yeah, it's like double plus two. Great. Uh, and also Blackblade Reforge is one I think about all the time too. It's going to be plus X plus X for X is your lands to a legend and it equips for really cheap. So your three threes all of a sudden a fifteen fifteen surprise. Yeah. Put this on a commander that already has evasion. You're flying. Yeah. You want it to be on a flying commander, or you want it to be on something Trampler. with trample. Yes, uh, ancestral mask. If you're playing um, enchantress type decks or uh, Voltron type decks, this this adds up so quick because one, it doesn't even count just yours for some. It's every enchantment on the battlefield. Ungodly reason. It's just like yeah. Uh, oh wait, you have a smothering tide. That's an extra plus two plus two. You're playing enchantress. Oh well, you're dead. Yeah, it it, it adds up so quick. Super sweet. I like seize the day. If you have one commander that's trying to jam in, especially with seven or more power, if it hits once, 
That means you can hit two more times by playing this and then flashing it back, getting three total combats, and killing someone. Yeah, High Learn BC doesn't know the word spell. Seize. Seize the day. It's, uh, yeah, with an IE, right? Yeah. It's, 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 I, it is I before E, except that you're C. So based on the English language, you were correct, BC. The English language is terrible, though, and I have been humiliated. Humiliated. BC spelled it S I. Oh, oh no! Oh no! I can't believe that. If we're talking about categories for winning the game, I can't think of one that makes it more easy to win the game than Moxfield.com. It's a Magic Gathering deck building website that you can go online and navigate to for free. Uh, if you use our link that isn't in the description, you get 0% off your free navigation to Moxfield.com. It lets you build commander decks, organize, sort, tag, systematically play test. It just makes it too easy to play. It makes it so so easy and you can make sure you have your win cons because you said tags BZ you know something about those tags you can make a win cons tag and when you do you can put all of your win cons from this video in there and I know what you're thinking what is this line on the table here this is light that we've never seen before and that's because moxville.com is shining a light on our lives this heavenly website all right next we have controlling turns what this means is well, your next turn, I'll take it. Yeah, first, I'll take it. It's not going to be good for you. Yeah, first we have Emrakul, The Promised End, which is silly. Sometimes it's just like 7 mana, 13, 13, and I'll control you next turn. You're right. It gives them an extra turn afterwards, but the the thing about controlling someone's turn that makes it so backbreaking, I think it might almost be the most guaranteed way to kill somebody. It's in the top several on this list of like, would I rather give my creatures plus 3, plus 3, or control their next turn for a person? It's like... A lot of the times I would rather just control their next turn because their commander is going to go somewhere that's not the command zone, and they're going to say, okay, yeah, I'll put the commander in the graveyard and keep it there. Their creatures, they're all going to run into bigger creatures. Uh, anything they have that pays life, they're dead. Yeah, exactly. You're going to pay all your life. if you. Yeah, exactly. Toxic, they lose Necropotence. Those cards just kill you if you have them even in your deck. And you're, Any way to find them in the yeah. hand, it's over. I mean, all, your, all your fetches and tutors, if they can't kill you, are fails to find. Yep, they're just going to. I'm going to look through your deck. I'm going to see if there's anything I can find. No, nothing good. Uh, I'll shuffle. You oh, actually found nothing. Looks like you're about, you could have had a really good turn. You have like recurring insight. You're going to draw a bunch of cards. And then you're going to discard down to seven lands. Yep, you're going to discard everything except for seven it's lands. so brutal. You, you're... Entire game just gets ground to a halt. It's such a, they're so good. There's also Mind Slaver. This one's repeatable. Mm -hmm. It's a, a common thing to do is just Mind Slaver. Uh, Academy what, Ruins. Academy Ruins. Keep putting it on top every single turn. Not fun, but you'll get there. Worst Fears is the same thing. But it exiles itself, so it's not and, as mean. And they do not give extra turns like Ember Call. Yeah, these two, they don't get their turns back. It just Their next turn's control, period. And then they pass, and then they have to somehow not die. Yes. Uh, also, Cruel Entertainment, similar to that. You make two players exchange turns. To me, this is the most fun one because I, I like picking me and somebody else and I go, I'm going to try to screw you up so bad that you die, but if I don't, you can screw me up. Yeah. And uh, you don't even have to pick yourself. You can just be like, you two control yourself. Yeah. Do what you want. You two annihilate each other, please. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, Cruel Entertainment's a silly card and a fun one. And some of the fanciest ways to do this are just alternative win cons. Now, there's a bunch of these. We're just going to go over a couple of, like, some of the more common ones and the more fun ones. The ones that you have to work for. Yeah, exactly. So you're working for these extra win cons because technically an alternative win con is Thoracle, but when we're, we're not talking about Thoracle, that's a combo usually. Puts me to sleep. Puts me to sleep, and it's the most common one. Approach the second sun. Super cool. Play it. Gain seven life. Go seven from the top. Cast it from your hand a second time. Win the game, baby. Seven mana. Do nothing. Put a giant target on your head. Now you got to figure out how to draw seven cards and play another seven mana sorcery. Yeah, super silly. I mean, it's not that good. It's not that strong, but it's fun to do. High tension. We have a friend that... Uh, Time to shout out Tim Rude. Tim, Tim Rude. We have a friend, Tim Rude, who plays this as a win con. And he always plays a fetch land and says, this is my insurance. So it's like, if you guys are like, I have to, we have to kill Tim. He's going to win. I'll be like, I'll shuffle it away. <laughs> yeah, I'll shuffle it away. <laughs> Which is hilarious because it's still in the deck. All right, so you could still just lose. And he did get away with that the one game. Can't believe it. I can't, yeah, I can't believe it. What are the other ones? Uh, next one is Simic Ascendancy. This is the plus one, plus one counters version of I win the game. you got to put 20 counters on things, which actually isn't that difficult. But then you got to survive with this clunky enchantment to your next turn, and then maybe you win. Yeah, this card's fine. It's not super hard to do, but it's also... It's weak. It's definitely weak, but I've seen it win games. Like, I'm putting 20 counters on my creatures and then not winning, and then waiting. Yep, and then waiting. Uh, revel in riches, control a bajillion treasures. I think 10 is the exact number. Really not that that bajillion. Sometimes people like to pair this with a board wipe, and it's like, here's 30 treasures. Can you answer this? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to answer, but again, you have to untap with it. Fun, cool, just a nice way to win. If you're playing a treasure stack, what better way to win than to literally revel in your riches? Yes, definitely a high-tension card. 
Yes. Uh, Helix Pinnacle. My favorite. This is this one's stupid. It's one green for an enchantment that does nothing but has Shroud. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't do anything. And you can pay one, or you can X mana, put X... Uh, tower counters. Is that what they are? I think it's tower counters. Oh, my God. X tower counters on this card. And then, if you have 100 at your upkeep, you win. So you play... So awesome. Put 100 mana into this card, you win the game. Yeah. 101 mana, win the game, no questions asked. Good luck getting there. Yeah, you're not getting there. It's tough. And <laughs> don't... Don't let anyone play Bane of Progress or, uh, actually, wow, this card took a giant hit when Druid of Purification came out. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. That yeah. card does not target. No, it does <laughs> not. Uh, and finally, the, maybe the jankiest one on here, Maze is in. Not only is it a bad card, but it wants you to play 10 other bad cards and work with them together and put them out one at a time to then say, hey, I control 10 different gates with different names. I win the game. Take that. Get wrecked. I win. Uh, if you want to see some other win cons, well, we talked about some combos, actually, too, in this video, why don't you go check out our win cons video. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.